Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my January roundup, my favorites, my fails and everything in between. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, I have to share with you about my new blanket. I know this seems like a ridiculous thing. I feel like this is a real niche like audience for this type of product, but I have to tell you about it because I'm this has changed my life. No joke. I've told all of my friends and family about this blanket and everybody is getting them and everybody's lives are changed and I want to change your life too. If like me, you are like permanently freezing cold at the moment and you are just generally cold person. I'm a generally cold person. I'm always freezing cold. Even like my husband, when he doesn't want the heating on, I've always got the heating on full blast, but I'm still cold even with the heating on. And working in this room all day, you know, there's one radiator, but I sit quite far away from it. It's a big room uh, with a lot of windows and I still always feel freezing when I'm working in here. I sit here with gloves on. That's that's what I'm talking about, okay? That's the level of cold we're talking about. And I have like a heated blanket on my bed, but this is like a heated throw and it's massive. I can't really obviously show you the whole thing in here, but it's huge and it plugs into like the wall. Apparently, the reason I bought this is because I, I was reading about how these are like the way to stay warm without just having the heating on 24 hours a day. Apparently, they're very cheap to run as far as paying for the electricity to run to heat them. And you can even leave it on the lower settings all night, overnight. You can put them in the washing machine and this covers me and both of my children. My children love sitting under the, underneath this uh, in the evenings when we're reading books or watching the TV and it is so nice. I actually get too hot at times. It covers me from here to my toes and my two children. It's game changing. It's so lovely. I can't foresee being without it now and it has a really nice long lead so I can plug it in here while I'm editing, have it on my lap like a old lady. I'm embracing my inner older lady right now and it, she's thriving. She's thriving and she's toasty and her cockles are warmed. What more could you want? I feel like that sounded like an ad, but I bought this myself and no one's paying me to say all of that. It's just the way I feel. Next up, let's talk about this Monkey Special fragrance from Zerjoff. This was the first of two new fragrances to me in January. Oh, this is delightful. This is right up my street. It's definitely a warm, spicy, slightly boozy fragrance. It's not as boozy as Angel's Share, by Killian, but it is, it's a hint of booziness. It's very warm, spicy fragrance. It's beautiful. It has a hint of like fruitiness about it. And it's got a lot of like my all time favorite notes, cinnamon, caramel, rum. It's got some passion fruit in the opening, which is where that hint of fruitiness comes from. Leather and then a musky ambergris dry down. It's so beautiful. It's not as like sillage bomby as a lot of my Zerjoff fragrances are. So this is a little more like office friendly. It's a little more wearable in the daytime than some that are, might be room filling and really overwhelming at certain times. It's definitely like an autumn winter fragrance, I would say. Very, very beautiful. I've been loving it and it's just, yeah, a new favourite. It went straight on the top shelf of my fragrance cabinet. What are we calling that? Fragrance shelving unit? Sh fragrance display unit. Is that correct? And the second fragrance of January is Valea from Parfums de Mali. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see this one coming. Okay, first thing to know is that this bottle is like crystal clear. It's a clear crystal looking bottle to my eye. From all of the advertising images and everything, I fully expected this to be white. And a lot of the comments people were talking about this, oh, what a great bridal wedding fragrance, especially with the white bottle. But it turns out it's actually clear, but I still think it's very beautiful and actually a lot more practical than a white bottle because for sure, if it was white, it would have got grubby makeup hands all over it by now. So this is better for me. Now this is like a white floral fragrance, which is not my usual cup of tea whatsoever when it comes to fragrances. I don't really buy 
dry florals at all and this is like a fruity floral fr fruity white floral and yeah really not on my radar at all when it comes to what I look for the type of fragrances I usually buy but I do really appreciate Parfums de Mali as a house I feel like their performance is always excellent as you could say the same thing for Zerzhov I've never hated a fragrance from Parfums de Mali, they always perform incredibly well and they're always quality fragrances. So I thought, you know, this year I have a lot of fragrance. I don't wanna really buy any more that are the same as something I already own. I like to experiment with my fragrance and buy different fragrances that might work better for other occasions that might not be my go-to type of fragrance, but they might offer me something new. That's the vibe I'm going for in 2023. And this ticked all of those boxes and I was really curious about it. <gasps> I absolutely love this fragrance. This performs incredibly well on me. Like when it first arrived, I sprayed a couple of sprays on and like an hour later, my husband came back from his run and was like, what is that smell? What is that smell? It was filling the house. It's so beautiful. And yes, it is very feminine and floral, of course. But I think because the dry down is quite musky, woodsy, it it kind of, there's something about it that's just not a really light, fresh floral. There's something a bit darker about this. It's definitely more my cup of tea than Delina. Delina is just like a feminine, like classic floral bomb. This is definitely a bit more mysterious, a bit darker, a bit more woodsy musky, but with obviously a very sort of fruity floral opening. I really love it. I think this will be one of my favorite fragrances in spring and summer because a lot of the fragrances I typically wear that are warm, spicy, that are boozy, that are tobacco-y, don't work as well in spring and summer. It becomes a little too much. A little overwhelming this is going to be perfect for spring and summer and it's a very good all year round fragrance like I've been wearing this you know in the winter I've been wearing this daytime evening it's very very versatile you could wear it any occasion any day any time any season but it's not one that I have to stop wearing in summer because it's a floral and it's very perfect for spring and summer it's been a real revolution to me because I didn't really expect it to be my cup of tea but it's a gorgeous fragrance the performance is like days and the CRs you know everybody smells it everyone's giving me compliments it's gorgeous next let's talk about these two new little brushes from Sonia G so these are two more of the mini sizes first we have the Nishi in the shorter handle and then we have the buffer with the shorter handle I mean Sonia G brushes are always incredible these I have both of these brushes actually I don't have this one I have the smooth buffer and I think the bristles of this are like the pro buffer <laughs> if that's a thing. So I find these bristles a little longer and less densely packed than my Smooth Buffer, which I really like. It's a bit more gentle and lighter on the skin. So if I'm actually just wanting to give everything a bit of a buff or buff powder over the skin, I prefer this one. If I'm actually trying to sort of correct like a harsh line or blend product away from the center of my face, then my Smooth Buffer, buffer I prefer because that one's a bit more of a like it's got a bit more power to it, you know. This one is more light and airy. And then this little mini one. I love the Nishi anyway. It was my favorite bronzer brush before the Jumbo bronzer came along because that's now, now my favorite. I'm just a very fickle when it comes to brushes, but I prefer this like smaller size. And I've been using this a lot for a more sculpted bronze. I love these handles. They're so easy to travel with because they take up a lot less space and they actually fit in a makeup bag without me feeling like the, brus the bristles are getting like smushed whenever I travel. I love these brushes. You can never be disappointed with Sony G brushes. It just depends whether you want the shorter handles or the classic handles, but they are excellent brushes. Next up, let's talk about the couple of items I picked up from the Shantakai Spring Collection Wild Meadows. First up, this little eyeshadow quad. I've really, really enjoyed this. It's just so pretty. It's the prettiest little palette and it just is a very cohesive little quad if i'm going to buy a quad i want to be able to do a full complete look that looks finished that gives me everything i want it to give me without having to like reach for another palette and this one does that beautifully i like that it's got a pretty universally usable matte in there and it's got a couple of more impactful shimmers and then like a satin in that pink it's so pretty 
very, very spring. It is very soft. I posted a picture with this on my Instagram if you want to see this on the eyes. And it's just very soft, pretty, very spring palette. Whether or not it's worth the money, you know, it's an expensive quad. Whether or not it's worth the money is really up to what you're looking for. I'm really happy with it. I think the formulas are really nice, but it is softer and more muted. So if you're looking for like a Pat McGrath kind of shimmer effect you aren't going to get that out of this it's going to be quieter it's going to be softer more muted but it is very pretty very elegant and perfect for spring and I think everything in there performed really beautifully and yeah I was really happy with it I also picked up one of the lip cheeks from that collection and I think this is my favorite Ever. I've only got a couple of these. This is Carpathia. Is that how you say that? I swatched this in a useless place that I'm not going to be able to show you. Let's put it here where it's actually useful. I feel like sometimes I like this formula. It's so nice and comfortable and juicy and it feels beautiful on the lips. Very nice and like balmy. Very hydrating, comfortable to wear. But I've never really found a colour that kind of gives me enough colour. <laughs> A shade that gives me enough colour, I should say. This one actually gives me a beautiful spring lip and I've really been enjoying it. The one I had before was Yarrow and it's just like, there's no colour there. This one actually gives me a lovely, pretty spring lip that's very easy going and feels lovely on the lips. Perfect for spring. I think that's my favourite colour so far. I always struggle to choose them because I like the idea of them and I like the formula, but I think if you have like a medium skin tone or deeper, they're all too light. There's hardly any colors available in the range that just have a bit more pigment to them. So that probably is the most pigmented one that I've seen so far. And I really think it's beautiful and perfect for spring. I was going to pick up the blushes from that collection, but for some reason they just never came to the UK website. I think you could now get them via Beautylish. Let me check. Sometimes Beautylish, like things are not available. They're on the website, but it will say you can't buy them in the, if you're in the UK. And then even though they aren't available anywhere else. So the rest of the collection launched on Shantakai's UK website, but the blushes just say coming soon and they still say coming soon and it's been weeks yeah it looks like they're not on the uk side of beautylish so that's really annoyed me to be honest i don't understand why the collection launched and only half of it came to the uk so i'm not going to pick the blushes up they've they've taken too long they've annoyed me and I'm crossed with them. So I'm moving on. You know, you can't hang about. You can't expect to bring out Harper Collection and then weeks later think I've still got it on my mind. We've moved on. There's been 58 new collections since that. So yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna bother going back and getting those blushes later. I don't need them. I think they're beautiful, but they will be lighter and more subtle. And you know, we've got blushes coming out of our ears that arrived on time, so there. Right, next up, let's talk about this Makeup by Mario foundation. I feel like I've been holding off talking about this because I've never been more confused in all of my life by a foundation. And I've given this foundation more chances than I think I've ever given a foundation before. I typically, I know how I feel about a foundation the first time I use it, typically. Things might, I might learn things about the foundation. Maybe it doesn't work with a specific primer that I tried. Maybe under certain different conditions, it didn't work as well or it worked better. Maybe it doesn't play nicely with certain other products. But typically, you know, I wear a foundation for a full day and I know how I feel about it. And those feelings will develop and I will get to know the product more over time. This foundation... It baffled me. I, I literally kept on using it and I basically used nothing else almost for an entire month, just trying to work out how I felt about it because I didn't love it. I was putting it on, nothing terrible was happening, nothing bad. I wasn't looking at it thinking, oh my God, it's patchy mess. Oh my God, the shade's completely off. It, do, it melts off my face after three hours. There's no specific real disastrous thing that I could tell you this foundation does that makes me hate it, 
But whenever I use it, whenever I wear it, I just don't feel happy with how my makeup looks. And it's nothing I could specifically put my finger on. What I will say is that it looks great at a distance. So if I look sort of in a mirror, say in the bathroom, and I'm just looking at myself in the mirror, my makeup looks great. It's got some luminosity, it's got some nice coverage, everything's even, and I like the undertones of the shades that I've got. But if I take a mirror and I look close up, there's all sorts going on, okay? Mostly like around this problem zone, the muzzle zone, as we like to refer to it here, you can see a lot of texture and something really weird happens to my chin with this foundation it's like it starts sort of separating on my chin area and like going like put like spotty something really weird I've never seen happen before I mean these are like tiny small little things but there's just something that I find looks very makeup y on the skin when I wear this it just feels not necessarily that it's sitting on top of the skin but something about the finish that looks very makeup y and it feels a little sticky to apply and there's just something I'm not gelling with that I'm not vibing with about this foundation I didn't really know what it was and then I gave up on like using it every day to just give it a break and try and process my thoughts and I used my house labs foundation and then the next day I used my Tom Ford foundation and I was like Ugh. I just I put those foundations on and I was like I love how my makeup looks today I love how my skin looks today this is how I want my skin to look and I don't know exactly what this is doing wrong really but there's something about the finish and just how my skin looks when I wear it that I don't love so it's not a hate it's not a dislike it's not done anything bizarre or crazy or terrible but I just don't prefer it I don't love it I don't love how it makes my skin look and that's really the best I can tell you I just don't know it's a bit of a mystery why it's a uh, meh for me, you know, it's just meh, that's all it is. Moving on, let's talk about this new Dior Forever Glow Veil Primer. This is the primer I have on today with the House Labs Foundation. I love this primer, I think it's beautiful. It's It feels lovely, very fresh and hydrating on the skin. It gives me a beautiful luminosity to the skin and it really stays giving me some healthy glow through foundation and on its own as well just a beautiful glowy luminosity I love the scent it just smells of beautiful skincare it's lovely to put on feels fresh healthy hydrated and that feeling lasts for a long time throughout the day it doesn't mess with any of my foundations I've now now tried this with my Tom Ford my house labs my hourglass I've tried it with pretty much every uh, foundation that I regularly rotate through my collection and nothing bad has happened. The one time something odd happened was when I almost instantly applied my foundation on top of it and it was just like mixing together. It was not a good time. So that was my mistake, but I will say that wouldn't have happened with my Tom Ford primer. You can do anything with that primer and it'll never play you. You can almost instantly put it on and then go straight in with foundation. I wouldn't, I'd give it a minute if you could, but that was the one thing where I was like, oh, my Tom Ford primer wouldn't have done that. Now I've had a few questions, which do you prefer the Tom Ford or this? And I, if I had to choose one to keep, I would keep the Tom Ford. They aren't really comparable. They're completely different primers. The Tom Ford is like a mattifying, smoothing, blurring primer. And this one is a glowy, luminous, hydrating primer. They are complete polar opposites in what they do. So, you know, which one is gonna be right for you completely depends on your skin type. You know, if you have dry skin, you're obviously gonna prefer this one. If you have oily skin, you're probably obviously gonna prefer, prefer the Tom Ford. And it really depends what you're looking for. You know, for me, it's going to depend on the day and what I'm going for. If I want the most glow from my foundation and I'm using a lighter coverage, I might really want to go for this one and get the maximum luminosity and glow from my skin. If I'm going for, if I'm using a foundation that's more matte like the Hourglass, this one gives me a, a bit of luminosity to it, which I really like. But if I'm just wanting to look flawless and my makeup to stay perfect all day and I'm using a more glowy luminous foundation I'll probably prefer the Tom Ford so it just really depends but this is beautiful it does not break down my foundation make anything too shiny or glowy it doesn't cause me any problems it never looks too like glittery or shiny it's just beautiful healthy skin in 
a bottle and I have been absolutely loving it. It's also beautiful just on its own because it's just gonna give you that I've just had a facial skin without foundation and it's, it's lovely. Probably my second favorite primer of all time. Now, while we're talking about Dior, we may as well move on to this concealer. I know exactly how I feel about this one and I love it. I love this concealer. I now picked up 2N, finally it came into stock. So I gifted my other shade to my sister. She's a bit fairer than me. So I gifted the shade that was too light to my sister and then I've been using 2N, which is, I mean, it's still quite light, but it's certainly good enough for me. I just love how this concealer feels. I feel like between this and say my other previous Holy Grails, the Pat McGrath and the Huda, the difference is really how it feels. It feels really fresh and hydrating and it feels light, really light under the eyes. Like it's such a thin consistency. It almost feels a bit watery, but it has amazing coverage, like the perfect amount of coverage, but like you've barely put anything there, which is very flattering on lines and texture. It also wears incredibly well. Like I look in the mirror about to take my makeup off at the end of the day and it looks the same. It looks the same as it did when I put it on. It does not crease, it doesn't separate, it doesn't exaggerate my lines and my texture. I, it's just perfect and I love this packaging. It's beautiful. And the doe fit is perfect as well. I love everything about it. I have nothing bad to say about it. It's glorious, delightful. My new Holy Grail concealer. We've already got, it's only January and we've already got one new Holy Grail. <gasps> This is gonna be a good year, I can just tell. So next up, let's talk about the Natasha Denona Love Love Face Palette. Now this I don't love, which is ironic. I mean, look at the absolute state of it. I've only used this blush one time and it's literally an utter state in there, an utter mess, but it did come a bit smashed. So yeah, I have had to repress the highlighter. I've got this highlighter on today. I just, I can't love this palette. The blush is a horror show. I'm, a, I'm afraid to, to say, I'm so sorry about it, but I don't, the blush is a nightmare. It's my hell for a cream blush. You know I'm not a cream blush kind of person, but there are definitely levels. There's cream blushes that I get on really well with and that I find actually pretty easy to work with. And then there's this type of cream blush, which is the stuff of nightmares for me. It's sticky, it's thick, it's heavy, it's hard to work with. It picks up my foundation and makes it look awful. So. I mean, the thing is, I don't really use the cream blush or the highlighter in the glam face palettes, but the eyeshadows are so amazing that I just don't really care. Do you know what I mean? Like I just use them as an eyeshadow palette and sometimes I'll use the highlighter, you know, for inner corner or something like that. But so I, you know, if, if I didn't love the blush, but the rest of the palette I loved, I would still feel, you know, happier about it, but I just don't, like this color story is just not for me. I feel like it's only really going to work for someone with like a fair to light medium skin tone. This blush is very light. It's very, very light, especially when you blend it out. And, you know, building cream blush is always a mistake. You wanna have enough pigment that you don't have to keep going back in, especially one that's going to already mess with your foundation. So that's just an absolute nightmare. And the shadows, they're not my colour story, I'll say that, but that doesn't really matter in, you know, how I review a product. It's not really about what I like as far as my personal preference of colour story. I just feel like the mattes are really nice other than the problematic deeper purple that I had some issues with, but the shimmer again is it's very very flaky and crumbly i don't think it's as nice as the shimmers in the glam palettes i don't think it's as sort of wet and shiny and i don't think it has as much like base color to it and i just think overall this is a bit of, it's a bit of a muddled color story like i'm not really sure what this warm toned matte is doing with all of these pastel pinks i'm not really sure i just i also feel like it was a mistake to only have the one shimmer you know in the other face palettes like this there are two shimmers three mattes i think that was a better balance it's just there's a lot about it i don't love and i think if you really really love pink you know there are lots of better pink 
colour story eyeshadow palettes, I feel like you'd be better off getting the Mini Love, you'd be better off with the original Retro palette. There are lots of like pinks from both Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath that I think that you will ultimately get on better with than this. I just feel like it didn't quite work out. And the highlighter is nice, but it's also not so special or amazing that I feel like it was worth you know, buying this whole giant palette just for that highlighter. I think, you know, I prefer Natasha's single highlighter. So yeah, that was a personal fail for me. And I just don't think there's many people who are going to really love it. You definitely have to be fairer skin tone for everything in there to work on you. And you'd have to really be obsessed with pink. And even then, I think you probably already have palettes that you prefer to that one if that's the case. Just my personal feelings. Now, I spoke last month in my December roundup about my lash serum that I've been using, the Glow For It lash serum. So I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail because I've already kind of told you all about it in my last roundup, but I did want to do just a check-in and a final, this is my thoughts after. I'm, I'm almost at 12 weeks. I think I'm at 11 and a half weeks of using this. I will show you my before and after, my 12 week before and after, because now it's very clear and you can very clearly see the improvement in the length and number and healthiness of my lashes. I mean, you can probably see it even now with mascara on, how amazing my lashes are looking. I've just repurchased a new one. This is kind of, it's still going. But um, yeah, it's getting low and I definitely want to keep on using this. So yeah, it's definitely still a hit. I'm still using it every single night and I'm still seeing an improvement to my lashes. So, and also no like crazy, they haven't started going completely wildly bonkers in different directions. So yeah, that is the update. Probably the final one that I will give on this little lash serum. So yeah, that's my 12 week check-in or 11 and a half if we're being specific. Next, let's talk about these Hourglass Satin Creme Lipsticks. I picked up a couple more shades of these just from having seen swatches and things to give my final thoughts. I'm wearing Larch today, which I think is my favorite of the nudes, but one that I kind of had to go and pick up, having seen everyone's swatches, was Reef, which I was kind of disappointed. I saw Erin Nicole and Morgan Turner's um swatch video and it was so bright on them and just because i'm quite a bit more medium to skin tone than both of those amazing women this looks i feel like it looks so much better on them than it does on me it's just it's way more muted on me with my slightly deeper skin tone than both of those ladies this looks so much brighter and popping on them so i was a little sad about that but a beautiful shade, Reef and Larch. These are my two favourites, I think, from the collection. What I will say is these are nice lipsticks. I've been enjoying them. I've worn them. I like them. I like, quite like the packaging, other than the fact that it's really annoying that you have to, like, turn it around the right way to get it back in. But they just aren't... Wow, like, there's nothing super wow special about them. If you have satin, any other satin lipsticks, you've got Charlotte Tilbury's, you've got Lisa Eldred's lipsticks, you've got the Dior lipsticks you've got Chanel lipsticks, you already have these and you don't need them. I don't think there's anything wildly special or amazing about them. And I think the color offering is kind of lacking as well. Like I struggled to pick up shades that I was really excited about. So they're nice, nothing wrong with them, no issues, but also nothing that kind of wows me or stands out about them either. Next up, let's talk about these highlighters from Charlotte Tilbury. My favorite shades that I picked up are definitely Gilded Glow and Champagne Glow. Champagne Glow, I have to use very carefully because it's quite light and bright for my skin tone. I won't be able to use this at all in summer. You can see it's quite light on me, but if I use it with a light hand, then it's beautiful, really melts into the skin and gives me a nice kind of glowy luminous cheek without being metallic or shimmery or sparkly or over the top. Gilded Glow is the one that is definitely going to work best for me in summer. And right now is the perfect sort of melt into my skin tone color. It's just a little less stark on my skin tone and melts in a bit more invisibly. I love these highlighters. They are beautiful. I don't think they're like my holy grail highlighter. I definitely have highlighters 
I prefer, like my Pat McGrath highlighters, my Chanel Rev de Camellia. But these are definitely up there in my top drawer and getting quite a lot of use. I think they're really nice and smooth and glowy without being metallic or shimmery without enhancing texture very much at all. And I really like that there's such a nice shade range so that there's kind of a color for everybody and everybody's preference. And I think they're really just easy going highlighters that do what they say on the tin without kind of being way, way too much. Like if you are like me, not a fan of the Rare Beauty highlighters because they're just too much for you, then I think these are a beautiful, more kind of toned down, luminosity. And I am using them very, very often these days. Next up, let's talk about the Love Collection products from Pat McGrath. So I only received these a few days ago. I've used them a couple of times, mostly this palette. So this is Velvet Liaison. I have to check the names every single time. And this is definitely my favorite product of all of those that I picked up from this collection. It's just so easy to use. Definitely kind of my cup of tea when it comes to like everyday, day-to-day -day makeup. I used this today and then just used one of the hypnotizing pop shots from Charlotte Tilbury on the lid because I wanted some sparkle. Most of the time I just use the cream shadow on the lid and have an all matte look and it's just perfect. It's everything I need it to be for a basics everyday palette and I think the formulas in here are like the best mattes that Pat McGrath has ever done. Really easy to work with and it's just a lovely perfect easy everyday like natural palette and I love it. Sublime Seduction I do like but like I said in my review it is a little warmer than I love my makeup or my eyeshadow to be but again everything in here works beautifully. I don't really have anything to add from my review. There's nothing, I've used every shade in here now a couple of times and it's a beautiful palette, a very nice warm toned palette without any kind of over the top Pat McGrath special sparkle. So yeah, I feel like it's just, oh, it's, it's a little underwhelming to be honest, just because it's very expected, very safe and not really anything new. But um, yeah, I think if you like a warm toned eyeshadow look, you, you can't really be disappointed. The liquid eyeshadows were even more so underwhelming to me. I feel like I had really high expectations of these to be like the most beautiful, metallic, sparkly, glittering, shimmering eyeshadow that I've ever seen in my life. And they just didn't quite deliver what I expected them to. I don't know what I expected and whether it was fair of me to expect such a thing. But I just thought, you know, if Pat McGrath is doing like liquid eyeshadows, surely they're gonna be like the most sparkly, wet look, shimmering, light reflecting liquid eyeshadows we've ever seen in all of our lives. And they're just like, I feel every other liquid eyeshadow, like I compared them to the Lisa Eldridge in my review and I feel like Lisa Eldridge makeup typically is much more natural and refined and elegant than sort of over the top impactful. Typically everything is quieter, that's just Lisa's aesthetic and the brand and uh, her liquid eyeshadows are just as impactful and shimmering if not more so than these. So I picked up Platinum Bronze and Divine Champagne, those are the two shades. I also was really disappointed with Platinum Bronze because it just looks quite muddy and murky compared to what I was expecting from the swatches. I do like Divine Champagne. I think that's a nice single eyeshadow used with Velvet Liaison maybe in the crease and it's a very pretty shadow. But again, there was nothing like wow, there was nothing, you know, I haven't seen before. It was, they were just very kind of middle of the road liquid eyeshadows that I thought were fine. But again, I don't know that anyone really needs them. I feel like I'm being really brutal today. I don't know why I'm in a bad mood, apparently. <laughs> so sorry. But let's end on a positive, on a high note, because these matte beauty blush ones from Charlotte Tilbury, I 
love them i have pillow talk on my cheeks today they're so easy to use i can't believe it i did not expect this i was having nightmares about these i didn't really want to buy them but i thought i've won i turned over a new leaf last year in trying more liquids and creams because i know so many of you love liquids and creams and it's rude of me not to review them for you just because i'm not a big fan of them and i had my resolution last year to try more liquids and creams so i'm becoming braver okay i'm trying all right i'm trying but not only are these like wands which i i instantly think are going to be harder to work with than say a stick or a pot cream blush i also the word matte conjured up nightmares and trauma for me because we all know what happened when charlotte tilbury took a best-selling product and put the word matte into it with the eyes to mesmerize situation it didn't work out it didn't go well for anyone concerned okay so these beauty blush ones or the beauty light ones have been very popular beautiful glowy cheeks so now we're coming out with a matte version i thought oh no we've we've seen this before i was thinking they're going to be thick and sticky and really hard to work with and they're going to pick up my foundation and they're going to be a nightmare and then i also saw the swatches the computer generated swatches online which looked really weird to be honest with you and i didn't even know what to do color wise but i i i went for it i took one for the team or i thought i was going to be taking one for the team for you guys and then I fell in love with them. I flipping love this one especially. It's the perfect everyday blush. It's so easy to work with. I literally twist it open, squeeze until I see the sponge move and the product come up. Then I let it all go back down, close the lid, and I just flick a brush across the top and pat it on. I find them very easy to control the amount. I find them very easy to build the amount. They're a dream to blend out. You need the tiniest amount. And I think they're very versatile as far as who they'll work on skin tone wise because they're very buildable, but they're also very blendable. They wear beautifully well. I, on the day that I reviewed these, I put, I think I filmed my review about midday and I had school runs, we had swimming that day. So they were on for a good like, probably seven hours by the time I took my makeup off and they still looked fresh and beautiful and in place. I was really, really pleasantly surprised that they aren't a flat matte finish. They have more of a natural sort of satin bit of luminosity to them and they just look like beautiful healthy skin with a, a warm flush i think the colors are much prettier in person than the computer generated swatches did them justice as well and i really like these they are a big hit for me and a big surprise hit at that so it turns out charlotte tilbury can do a matte product although all can she though because these aren't these aren't really matte, so maybe, maybe that's the secret. Charlotte Tilbury, when they do matte products, should just not make them matte. They're just actually satin products or glowy products even. You know, sometimes you've got to stick to what you're good at and you've got to stick to what you know, and these are delightful. And there you have it. Those are all of my favourites, fails and updates for the month of January. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.